Looks can be deceiving. And I'm a big fight fan. Whether it's boxing, or mixed martial arts, the ultimate fighting championship, all that good stuff. I love the, the, the combat. You know, two warriors going against each other. Just man to man. Winner take all. Giving it your best. And see who comes out on top. So recently I was actually watching the Mayweather Mariana fight and it was a pretty good fight. It, it was entertaining. Um, but as I started watching the fight, I, I got a little frustrated at uh, how the commentators were portraying the fight. In the early stages, it was that it was it was all one sided. Like, like Mayweather was getting hammered, he was he was losing, and, and sort of watching the fight, wondering what fight are these guys watching. I don't see any of that. But then I thought about it, and, and I and, and it sort of brought me to today's topic. Looks can be deceiving. Because what I saw was one guy doing a lot of punches, a lot of work, real busy, but he wasn't connecting a lot. So I took a step back and I'm thinking maybe from their vantage point, maybe their perception was that because he was very busy, because he was throwing a lot of punches, because he was back in Mayweather, back on the ropes, that he was winning. Just his aggressive nature was being successful. And I thought, maybe, you know what? If you look at it from a wide-angle lens, from far away, and you see one guy getting backed up on the road, one guy, you know, in a defensive posture, the other guy throwing a lot of punches, then maybe you do see it one-sided. Maybe you do see one guy win. But then when you, when you zoom in and get closer, you can see that there lacks substance in much of what was going on. Listen, it's boxing. And in boxing, you don't get points for punching the shoulder, neck, the back of the head, the top rope. And that's what I saw. A lot of punches being thrown, but very few connected. So again, that brought me to today's topic. Looks can be deceiving. And it's not just about boxing. You know, maybe in corporate America, maybe in your company you're with right now, there's somebody on your team that did it at your weekly meetings. They're at the meeting and they're doing a lot of talking and the blah, blah, blah about what they've done and, and the contribution they're bringing to the team and, and how valuable they are. But when you dig a little bit deeper, you realize they're really not doing too much of anything, just talking. And it's about substance. It's not about the surface. It's about getting to the heart of the matter, the heart of the man or woman, and the depth of what's inside. So my first point is very simple. My first point is very simple. You really have to identify the items where there's substance over just show. And you are in whatever capacity, you be the person that has the substance. Don't just talk about it, be about it. Don't talk the talk without walking the walk. Live the life that you proclaim to have. Which leads to my second point. My second point, and this is the real reason why that's important, is because somewhere, somebody's watching. There may be people listening to you, and if you got a big enough stage or a big enough platform, they're hearing what you're saying. But even beyond the people that are listening to you, there are people that are outside of that earshot, outside of that, that range, that can't hear you, but can watch you. They're observing you to see if you're living the life that you claim to have, if you're walking the walk. Not just talking about how great you are, if you're walking in, in, in a manner that shows greatness. Not just talking about being successful, but living a life of success. The last point is about accountability. We are accountable to God, to ourselves, and also to our families. If you're a child, you're accountable to your parents and the lineage of the people that came before you. If you're a parent, you're accountable to both your parents and your children, leaving a legacy for them. But that first thing, we're certainly accountable to God. And you can't fool God. God sees all. He's omnipotent. He's everywhere. Knows all things. So you can't get over on God. The second thing, if we're being honest with ourselves and we're looking in the mirror, we can't fool ourselves. 
We may be able to talk to talk everywhere else, but at the end of the day, when we look in the mirror, we're looking exactly at exactly who we are. Which leads to the last piece, the people that are closest to you. You can't fake the funk on them either. The people that truly, truly know you and truly, genuinely love you, they know exactly who you are on your good days and your bad days. And the beauty of it is that they love you on both days. They love you just the same. So you can't get over on them. You may be able to be out there and then tell the world how great you are. But God knows, you know, and they know as well. Listen, it's not about what the outer appearance looks like. It's the substance, the heart of a man, the heart of a woman, the depth of who you really are, not just what people see, but it's how you live your life. And if you truly and honestly want to be great, you want to be successful, and you want to be at your very best, then you have to make sure the substance of who you are shows so that others are fine. Oh, step back, step back, step back, step back.